Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues. Press that like button um, if you find the analysis that I provide every week useful. So let's get into really the, um, uh, the week ahead. Looking at the uh, economic calendar from Trading Economics, um, running through really what I think is the most important um, data to kind of look at is really the uh, the RBA interest rate decision. Um, there, the, the forecast, the consensus and the forecast anyways are pretty much in alignment, meaning that they don't expect uh, an RBA rate hike. If they do hike rates, the Australian dollar will be a buy. Um, but I think whatever's, um, you know, the current um, interest rate has been priced in. Uh, you have uh, Canada's uh, growth rate as well, which is definitely something uh, to be watched. The consensus is for 6.2, trading economics is for 5.5. So let's see what happens uh, there. Uh, as we scroll down to uh, Wednesday, that was Tuesday, by the way. So there's nothing really, nothing majorly important on the Monday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, RBA chart pack growth rate is going to be obviously important because that supports potentially whether um, the RBA will look to high rates or not. <clears throat> uh, Canada, Bank of Canada had their interest rate decision as well. It's expected to be a hike. The general market consensus and um, trading economics forecast is for a 0.25% uh, um, or 25 basis point uh, hike. And um, that's, that's on Wednesday. So Thursday we have uh, unemployment rate EA, uh, say EA, yeah, European, um, Zone, and then we've got Friday, which is basically the uh, the, the non farm payrolls and employment rate first day, first Friday of the month. So, uh, we're into March already. Imagine uh, the consensus is for uh, a slight uh, drop off in um, in non farm payrolls. Um, the trading economics team think that it actually should be somewhere around the 350k, and the unemployment rate as well should be somewhere um, okay. Uh, I guess no, really no change, maybe a slight drop. So let's see what happens uh, with those. It's probably going to be business as usual. And uh, again, maybe before we get into the um, uh, the, uh, the the technicals and some deeper fundamentals, also as well, if, if you didn't uh, catch it, I decided to. Put the uh, fundamental analysis webinar I uh, had a couple weeks ago, uh, the three steps to generating a profit all forex trade idea. This is really, um, if you're a forex trader or call yourself a forex trader and you don't understand this stuff, then um, how can you really call yourself a forex trader? You're just a pattern trader, someone who trades charts. Um, you have to, in order for you to call yourself really an asset trader you have to understand about that asset uh, prices are not driven by technical analysis regardless of what is banded around on TikTok and facebook and uh, youtube it's all about fundamental analysis in the medium to long term so if you type in fundamental analysis webinar the three steps to generate profitable forex trade ideas uh, you'll get a nice uh, two-hour webinar um, uh, which will explain really the ins and outs and why currencies uh, generally strengthen um, or a trade idea to that effect anyways. But let's get into now the um, uh, the uh, technicals and some more fundamentals. And we're starting off as we normally do on the dollar index. And the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, the major currencies, other currencies like the pound, the euro, and the yen. And uh, last week's analysis was just saying that pretty much uh, this is deemed as an expensive area um, up at the top. Right, E for expensive, B for bargain price, and uh, really, which way you really want to be looking for? I say I'm looking for because it's not financial advice. Is really again a dollar buy, right? I was looking at dollar buys, and um, uh, you pretty much seen it. What happened uh, this week? Uh, we had the dollar buy, right? We dollar the dollar went higher. I'm not saying that it's going to do that every single week, but generally the path of least resistance should be to the upside. So uh, you can go back and look at last week's analysis. Um, so now I'm just looking for a basically a pullback, but look, not looking to trade the dollar index per se, just uh, looking for this as confluence. And if prices do come down to uh, buy zones at 96, maybe 95, 50 round areas, um, or half numbers and round numbers, then those would be the zones that I'm looking at um, 
uh, looking to buy the dollar against obviously the the dollar yen uh, the dollar uh, Swiss as well are, are my pairs and in fact I'm in the dollar Swiss trade at the moment and we'll get into that a bit later but fundamentally you've got the uh, Fed repeats it will soon be time to raise rates a Fed release report to Congress ahead of Powell testimony and report based on data gathered before Russia invaded Ukraine now um, there is a bit of a problem to that because um, what happens is if you hike rates a bit too much, and again, this is covered in the webinar, then you could um, hurt the economy. So the Fed may not hike as much as the, uh, I think they were talking about 50 basis points, 0.5% uh, at one point, but now they may only uh, hike uh, 0.25. But let's read the, the, you know, the next uh, couple of paragraphs. The Federal Reserve reiterated its view uh, that it will soon be time to raise interest rates to counter high inflation amid a buoyant US jobs market. The Fed said it would soon be appropriate to raise the target range for the federal funds rate, citing inflation was well above its 2 target and a strong labor market um, in its semi-annual report to Congress released Friday ahead of testimony of lawmakers next week by Jerome Powell um, so let's see uh, what happens there the 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 um, the conflict in uh, in the Ukraine with Russia uh, may hit global markets um, and may obviously uh, affect the GDP of all countries um, as we are really kind of um, interrelated. This is interbank and that, um, um, I can't remember what it's called now, Inter interconnected, oh bloody hell the name is, uh, escapes me, but we are um, um, uh, inter, um, we are all, all connected anyway, I guess globalisation. Um, so whatever happens in some countries will affect others, uh, depending on obviously imports and exports. Uh, Russia being a, um, a very um, uh, uh, export heavy commodity currency, gas um, um, and oil uh, country. So it will affect um, other countries throughout the world. So let's see what happens with that. So we are in a, a bit of a risk off environment. And uh Again, if the if the, uh, the 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 invasion escalates, then you're going to see you're probably going to see the dollar um, against some currencies start to still start to uh, rise in value as the dollar is seen as a risk off uh, currency uh, or can be in times of a of a crisis, um, as well as the yen and the uh, Swiss franc. But uh, yeah, so the Ukraine. Um, you know, is uh, um, they're going through their uh, their crisis at the moment, and also as well, just in case you did miss this, oh, not that one, but this one, the uh, managing your forex trade in a risk environment. Um, I published that this week as well, so you can go over um, really how to manage your trades risk and really my general view of um, of how I'm trading the markets and how I trade the markets during the risk off scenario. So you've got two videos really to watch, lots of content for you. Anyways. Um, my bias is definitely to the upside on the dollar, so any pullbacks will be uh, confluence um, uh, to buy the dollar. Now, moving on to the dollar yen. Now, the dollar yen, um, you know, has gone up uh, this week. I did say from last week, last week's analysis uh, was looking at this area as a pullback uh, for a nice little uh, buy, and this is basically what happened. Prices came down into this one fourteen. Uh, 0.68 uh, demand zone the start of that area there and they were buying opportunities which you know prices went to the upside now again um, in a risk off environment what typically happens is that the yen should strengthen uh, against the uh, the dollar but let's see what happens uh, with with prices and you never know what, what price is going to do in the short term but in in um, in the long term you should have uh, the you know the dollar start to rise against the yen and again it just depends on whether the um, the things really do escalate uh, severely or whether it is a short-lived um, uh, um, uh, crisis in Russia and whether things get you know resolved soon if they do get resolved soon then I think the, uh, the the path of least resistance is still to the upside, and any pullbacks to demand zones, I can get rid of probably that one there. Um, maybe drag that up there as that's a hidden demand. Um, will be uh, definitely look for a buy trades. I'm looking for buy trades myself, so that's that. But if risk does you know persist and things get worse, then you should expect. Um, or I would expect the Japanese yen to actually strengthen. I've seen. Um, 
uh, uh, targets of the actual 111s, right? Um, I said in our, in our private mentoring group, we were looking at there was a, some bank analysis that was talking about the 111s as a as a target um, in a risk off environment. But let's see what happens uh, with that. Any pullbacks, I think, of buying opportunities. Uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss uh, managed to get in uh, right at the uh, daily lows. On the uh, dollar Swiss, which was uh, a nice buying opportunity, so for me, uh, this was really the uh, the trade uh, right here. Long position, literally at the end of the day, managed to get involved in that. I think it was about a thirty pip stop, something like actually about 27, 28 pip stop, um, and then yep. So we're up, entered into two positions, profitable trade so far, and swing trading one. Um, uh, one of the final positions on this now again I have no idea where whether the price will continue going higher or lower if again the conflict gets resolved I would expect the dollar to continue to strengthen in the face of a rate hike or if things do get worse um, potentially we could see the, the Swiss franc strengthen uh, but either way this was a nice profitable trade as well as the uh, the CAD Swiss um, and we broke down that trade um, in the uh, private mentoring group on Discord. So um, um, decent week uh, um, for, for trading. But let's see what happens uh, uh, this week. There is a demand zone around here, not necessarily the strongest area of demand. I personally, if prices do come down, I personally uh, will look for, again, some long trades. Probably the better area would be, or the cheaper area exchange rate would be somewhere around this 91, uh, 0.91 cent area. I'm, I am looking at that area as well uh, for buy trades. Moving on to the um, the dollar CAD. And the dollar CAD, um, uh, again, uh, bit of a difficult one to trade you've got two central banks that are looking to high crates but in a uh, straight fight I guess um, uh, when you're looking at the uh, the risk sentiment the dollar should be the one to strengthen which it did this week as well you know prices did go higher before again uh, coming back uh, lower again in the short term it's very difficult to actually um, you know predict what prices are going to do in the short term but in the in the medium to long term uh, in the medium to long term, um, you know, you, you should be able to predict if you understand how to use fundamentals where prices are going to go. Now, um, two central banks together, um, hiking rates, again, it's a harder trade to take. So for me, I'm not really interested in this. I did say last week, if you did want to get involved in this trade here um, or to the to the downside, that would be really your, your options. And if you want to get involved in, uh, you know, buying the uh, the dollar, the US dollar, that would be your trade to the upside. Those would be the, really the kind of the two, three uh, best zones to look for any kind of uh, any kind of trade. So uh, let's see what happens with that. But I'm not really interested in, in the dollar CAD at the moment, even though I think in a risk off environment, the, uh, the dollar, US dollar should strengthen. New Zealand dollar, US dollar backed by popular demand. And in fact, I should really delete all the analysis. Um, I know I did uh, take this off um a few uh, I haven't really looked at it a few months in a few months really because I'm not really trading it but I have read some YouTube comments uh, that were wondering about the um the New Zealand dollar US dollar so I thought I'd just add it uh, just to do a little bit of analysis I guess on it just for those of you who are trading it uh, so that's the demand zone there's another demand zone and um that's where we are Right now, zooming in again, um, two central banks that are looking to uh, hide crates. Again, you did see prices come up to this supply zone, nice little sell off. And if you want to be a buyer, you know, could have bought down here for the upside, right? But again, for me, um, it's a it's a harder trade to predict where 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 prices will go or may go um, in the medium to long term as you've got again the RBA uh, sorry RBNZ the Reserve Bank of New Zealand and and the uh, uh, the Federal Reserve both hiking rates so you'd probably expect prices to really kind of you know stay within this range here within this uh, fair value auction between um, the uh, 69 round number and probably 60 0.65 cent uh, Point two, anyways, around there. That's where prices are probably going to remain for the foreseeable future, I think. Um, but again, 
if you are looking at buy trades i'd probably say anything around uh, the lows and the highs as these represent uh, bargain areas depending on whether you're buying the quote currency or the base currency so moving on to the pound dollar pound dollar and uh, we did have a level of demand in and around this area again i was saying uh, last week that this level had been touched several times and i was probably saying that i uh, say probably i did say that if you wanted to get involved in this trade you may want to wait for a prices to come up to that 137 round number before getting in, in short but what happened is is that obviously we were in a risk off scenario money will flow generally flow into the US dollar which means that prices should want to you know go short which it did you know go to the downside um, the demand zone as actually held prices didn't close there but let's see what happens um, this week again this is not really a pair that I'm looking to trade but fundamentally um, we're looking at um, the Bank of England a half point a half point Bank of England rate hike is sliding out of reach for traders so policy may who backed a half point raise now more cautious focus will shift to appearances by man and Saunders next week so traders are pairing back bets of a 50 basis points hike interest rate um, sorry interest rate increase from the Bank of England at the next meeting after the invasion of the Ukraine and uh, more cautious comments from policymakers who previously voted for a bigger move so again the uh, the um, the Ukraine invasion or the Russia invasion of uh, of the Ukraine is um, is causing concern for the uh, central bankers looking to hike rates more than usual. So they're probably going to hike rates, but just not as uh, as much as previously previously expected. So from that perspective. Um, I guess we can kind of delete this um, I'm going to draw I guess a zone I don't really like drawing a zone from here to here at all it's not really how to draw zones but I will draw it there it's not even a strong area of demand but um, there is scope for a potential to look for any kind of buy trades in there not something not a trade that I would look really to take um, unless it was maybe something on the intraday um, I don't want to see a lot more than than that, but I'll keep it there for now. The the ultimate goal, if you were looking to buy the dollar, would be uh, really down into this uh, the, this low. And if you were looking to buy the dollar, uh, then you're looking at uh, an area there. Just again, keep in mind that the level's been touched several times, so the better area is really up at the top, the one three sevens. Um, so now moving on from the. Um, from the pound dollar to the euro dollar euro dollar so um again uh, just looking at really where the path of least resistance has been been saying we want to be a buyer, buyers of the dollar um and the euro has suffered because of risk of sentiment um and this is due to the close proximity of the issue at hand uh, to Europe Europe are going to, going to definitely be the most uh, affected by um, any any problems in that region and, and basically you're seeing that you know play out right now this week so uh, there was a few traders in the group that really took advantage managed to get involved up here and you know uh, swing trading it down for they've got a good couple of hundred pips well done to those traders um, and uh, yeah so this was potentially again it's always a good profit taking area around these areas here um, but if again if if, if uh, the um, the the tensions do escalate and I say tensions but the invasion does escalate you'd probably expect um, the, the the pound uh, sorry the uh, the euro dollar to uh, continue to, to fall right down to potentially there's again there's targets of the one tens so um, let's see what happens there so if you're looking at uh, more conflicts then really a pullback into that 113 10 area uh, is really where you're looking at uh, getting short in that zone if you're looking at getting long on the fact that there potentially may be um, a bit of a resolution sooner rather than later any pullbacks into that demand zone I think are decent buying opportunities for the euro uh, technically not necessarily fundamentally but um, technically if you do want to get involved in that looking at the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar prices did come up to uh, a nice uh, zone Precious zone of uh, of supply, which is right here, and then uh, prices did fall, and again we did get a bit of a pullback as well. So, um, again, short term, nobody knows what's going to happen, but there was scope um, uh, to get in short uh, during that. So between, you know, there was actually. Uh, 
how many uh, pips whatever move so from the absolute high you managed to capture the absolute high which no one ever does um to the absolute low which again no one ever does but there was definitely 189 190 pips um worth of movement within that zone there so again to zoom in down into that lower time frame if you went down into that lower time frame and then looked for a potential entry in and around there that would have been represented a really nice risk reward trade there but um let's see what happens uh, with the aussie dollar not looking to really take this trade although i understand why traders are taking this but for me personally not looking at this uh, currency pair at all um again if you were, if i was looking at it from a technical perspective i think the fresher area of um of supply for a short trade uh, my bias would still be to short the uh, the australian dollar and buy the us dollar um, as the US dollar fundamentally should be ahead of the Australian dollar um, from a monetary policy perspective. So there we are. Um, moving on to the uh, the Aussie yen and Aussie yen again. I haven't traded. Well, I haven't traded it, but I haven't uh, analysed it. This uh, this currency pair for again a, a, a while. So I thought I'd add this again. Popular demand. Um, and let's see what happens so let's see that's a supply right there drag that back in fact i'll leave that there you've got uh supply and supply at the top and then where demand zones demand zones you're looking at around here and uh you're looking at the lows you know probably take all that into consideration actually this whole area into consideration right there so lots of demand uh, in and around that zone. When you get a large area of demand, by the way, what you want to do is break that down. Um, one of the ways that you can break that down is just looking at where there's uh, potential support and resistance zones that have been traded um, within that zone and then look for you know trades. If prices do come down into that area, that would be where you're looking for. But I'd probably prefer the fresher area of demand and that fresher area would probably represent somewhere around around here. Here you can see that there's definitely support and resistance in that zone there. It's so just slightly below it, around that 80 round number, matter of fact. So that would be nice. And if uh, prices do come down due to risk off sentiment, I think uh, these areas to, to look for buy trades are going to be quite nice. If you're looking at, um, uh, again, risk more risk on, I think the path of this resistance is to the downside. So you're looking for really kind of, like I said, pullbacks. If you're looking for risk off, I do think now technically isn't the greatest time to look for a risk off trade although um you know risk off sentiment really would would drive price if we you know open up on the sunday and things have escalated and got even worse so um personally you probably want to look for that 84 brown number just above that or a fresher area of supply to look for short trades as in a risk off environment the uh, the, the yen uh, strengthens so you'd want to get short on this currency pair and moving finally on to gold so gold um, again just doing previous analysis uh, from last week you can have a look at that or have a watch of that but um, uh, I think uh, with, with, with risk definitely coming off uh, and the invasion there was a nice uh, move to the upside right for the, uh, for gold, which uh, eventually culminated in a bit of a, um, a, a, a a reversal, and I don't I hesitate to call it a reversal um, of any type because um, there's probably this is definitely a, an illiquid market, right? So meaning that there's not enough liquidity. So if there's not enough liquidity to sustain this move, then you'd need to. Um, definitely needs to uh, uh the price uh, needs to come back down to search for the liquidity to go potentially go higher right so let's see what happens there and if you haven't already as well um watch uh, mark chapman's uh, webinar um on on the liquidity providers that would definitely provide a lot of insight into really the move and the reasons why the market makers um uh, 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 have to provide liquidity and the certain footprints of the market makers there's definitely market makers in here I can tell you that now anyways if you are looking to buy gold from a fundamental perspective meaning or definitely a risk sentiment perspective uh, then you're looking at a pullback into that demand zone for sure uh, that, that represent a decent buy 
with maybe some upside potential around the 160s. If you are looking at um, the fact that you want to get short, I'd have to still say again, you'd have to wait for really prices to come up to that 160 for me anyway, before looking at short trades. Um, no point in shorting now. First of all, your risk reward is going to be insane and no one's going to take that uh, risk reward. So you really want to get, you know, if you want to short gold, you want to short gold at a better price, which would be up at least around these uh, 1942s to 1972 areas. So um, again, if you understand that or if you think that the uh, crisis is going to escalate, then you want to be a buyer of gold. If you think that things are going to uh, resolve sooner rather than later, then this could be a potential for a decent uh, short trade. Um, anyways, guys, I think that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, yeah, pretty much it for this week. Uh, take care, guys, and uh, I will see you soon. Till the next video.